All right, hello everyone and welcome back. So since my last video, I've really been thinking a lot about the long vertical spread challenge. And so I can't stop thinking about it, which means I'm gonna have to go ahead and just do it. I don't know how it's gonna go. My experience with long vertical spreads in the past hasn't been particularly good. Overall, I'm down and I'll show you that as we unfold today's video. Uh, but I did a back test and I made a blog post about it and it looks promising given the management style that I've uh, adopted. So we're going to unfold all of that. So without any more from me, let's go and take a look at the screen. And as we unfold this PowerPoint, I'll bring in different things that I want you to see. I'm trying to just turn a thousand dollars into 2000. I'm just going to put a thousand dollars into my Tastyworks account and I'm going to simply try to double it. So why would I want to do this? As I mentioned in the last video when we talked, I'll put it on the screen again for those of you that didn't see the last video. Uh, I read a book called 25,000 uh, Options Trading Challenge, how to grow 2,500 into 25,000 in a year in the stock market using options trading and technical analysis. Uh, but the back, back testing results are promising. And uh, just to kind of show you my past experience with long vertical spreads, I'm going to pull onto the screen at this time a spreadsheet that I made. If you want this spreadsheet, the spreadsheet has a number of tools, uh, but it is available at optionboxer.com. Um, all right, so over here on the right hand side, this is kind of my options performance. Uh, but what I want to focus on right now is the bear put and the bull call. You can see the bull call spread's been a little bit better to me than the bear put spread over the course of 2015 to 2023. So this is uh, just kind of the performance for, for me with the long vertical spread. So obviously I'm hoping to do considerably better if I'm hoping to double my money. But that's my past experience with long vertical spreads. Again, it hasn't been satisfactory. Uh, but let's talk about some key problems with the long vertical spread strategy. And we all know them. If you've traded even one option, you're familiar with these three things. We got to get the direction right. We got to get the timing right. And we got to get the volatility right. The biggest benefits, lower risk, higher reward. Uh, but so looking at the back test, I'm going to take you to my blog now. Just so here I am on optionboxer.com and, uh, and I wrote a blog post. I hope you'll check it out. Uh, overall, I was able to double my account and I was able to do it in about six or seven months. So it was really, really profitable. It really worked well. And, and I go through kind of my thoughts about what I could have done better, how I did well versus the previous test. And then I, I also have a third test here and you can go through each test. But I just wanted to show you that in case you're curious. Again, just go to option boxer.com and you can click on that very first blog post and, and take a look at kind of the trades that I made and my rationale for, for those trades and what I did good and what I did bad. Uh, but the starting balance was $1,000. Uh, ending balance, I finished with 2067 as I mentioned. Uh, that, the return on my account, 106.7%. The win percentage, which is going to be very important in a long vertical spread challenge. The win percentage was 55.5%. And then the back test period, again, I did it within six months, middle of July. And, uh, and I finished right at the end of December, I was able to hit my goal. So those were the back test results that, that proved the most promising. So that management style, that those criteria are the ones I'm gonna be adopting for this strategy. And so my philosophy after going through that back test and after considering my own experience with long vertical spreads, I wanna maintain a little bit of a fluid philosophy. I wanna be able to improve over time. So I've gotta be willing to make changes. I've gotta be willing to change or try new things that could potentially make the strategy better uh, longer term. But I got to keep my capital working. Something I noticed uh, when I was doing the back testing is a lot of times I had capital sitting idle. I don't want to use all of the thousand dollars I have available, uh, but I want to use a, a large portion of it and I want to keep it engaged in the market so that I'm constantly making or possibly losing money. But I want to give myself the chance to be uh, profitable as often as possible. I want to avoid overanalyzing. Sure, I'm not alone here, but I have the tendency to negotiate with myself over trades way more than I should. And I, I'm not, I don't want to do that here. I want to just say, this is my strategy. This is my criteria. If it meets it, I want to take the trade. I maintain a 50% win rate. If I'm able to do that and I manage it with the risk reward that I'm, I'm currently looking at, if I'm able to maintain a 50% win rate and I execute on my risk reward strategy, then I should be profitable. In order to avoid going through, so this was kind of the challenge assets, in order to avoid going through different scans to find stocks to trade and potentially trading illiquid underlyings. I'm just going to trade the most liquid ETFs. Everybody knows these. If you've, if you've been involved in the market uh, for even a day, you've, you've heard of most of these, at least SPY and QQQ. 
Um, but IWM, TLT, and GLD, all very liquid. Challenge criteria, so kind of go through specifically what I'm gonna be looking for. I'm only gonna trade long vertical spreads. I'm not gonna mix in any credit spreads. I, I've never done it this way where I just trade one strategy and nothing else. I've always tried to take the most appropriate trade with what I believe the market conditions are. But for this challenge, I'm just gonna trade the one strategy. Uh, I'm gonna look to get in 20 to 30 days to expiration at the entry point or when I get into the trade. And my thought process there is I want it to be close enough to expiration that a move into the money, my short strike gets into the money, I want it to reach that 75% profit. And what I noticed is if I get to trading the 50, 60, 70 days to expiration, yeah, it gives me more time to be right, but often what happens is my trade will go all the way in the money where I need it to, but I'm not able to hit my 75% profit target. So I wanna be closer to expiration so that I can, but not so close that one bad move against me pretty much kills the trade. I wanna give myself at least a little bit of a chance. So that's for now, that's kind of where I'm starting. Profit target 75%, stop target 50% must close one week before expiration. So if I get to that very last week and it hasn't reached my expiration and it hasn't hit my stop target, I'm just gonna close it at whatever the amount is. When you get inside that last week, kind of what I just talked about, if it makes one wrong move against you, the, the trade is done. So you may be able to salvage some capital there by trading it or by closing it a little bit early. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And if you read the blog post that I mentioned, uh, you'll see where I talked about at eight or nine days to expiration, if it's profitable, I'll probably just go ahead and close it because what I noticed is on several trades, I would get to that nine to eight days to expiration and then I would have a move against me and it would kill the trade. It would have been, it was profitable at nine days and then by the time it got to the seven day uh, mark, it just, it was a, a losing trade. Uh, the challenge indicators I'm gonna use, I wanna use a one day chart. Uh, to identify the overall trend, that's the direction I'm going to pretty much trade in. Uh, I want to use the one hour chart to identify when it's overbought and oversold. So kind of use the longer time frame chart to see which way I want to trade and then find my entry point from the one hour chart. Uh, the volume profile, I'm going to identify any key levels. If I feel like price is running into a potential a key level where it could reverse. I may take the profit early. We'll just kind of play that by ear. And then the standard deviation channel is to identify potential areas where price may reverse. If it gets down to the lower standard deviation channel, well, there's a relatively high probability that it's gonna go back up. If it gets to the upper uh, boundary, then it's a, a relatively high probability that it'll come back down. So those are the indicators I'm gonna use. I may or may not use this, but I, I found it a little bit easier to find different candidates. But I may use the Thinkorswim Spread Hacker to figure out what trades I wanna make. And I've got it pulled up here on the screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you it now. And so the probability of profit, I just these are the parameters I set just to find a number of trades. Now I wanna trade at least $2 wide spreads. That way it gives me a, a bigger max profit. My prob probability of profit, I wanted at least 30% on the high end, 70%. Days to expiration, again, 20 to 30. And then the max profit anywhere from 50 to 500. I, I didn't wanna go to like a thousand or just leave the 500% the area blank because it may find trades that are just unrealistic. So I wanted to put a cap on there at some point. But you can see, just looking through here, I, it would be a quick process for me to find potential trades. And you can see the one that I've got highlighted here. And we're just gonna go ahead and analyze that really quickly. So you can see, looking at this first trade, it's, it's gonna cost us about 65 cents to get into the trade. Uh, on this particular trade, we're looking at almost a 50, 50 50 opportunity here. And so with that, I wanna show you a spreadsheet that I made, and this is available also on optionboxer.com. If you just go to the free trading tools page, it's called the options, I just named it the options profit simulator. And it just gives you the ability to run it against 10,000 trades. So using the, the, the metrics for whatever particular trade you're looking at, if you were able to execute on that strategy at those exact parameters over 10,000 trades, this would be your outcome. Uh, debit, so we wanna make sure we enter the strike width, which is two. It's kind of backwards here because this is also built for credit spreads. What is the opposite? So $2 minus 65 is 135, I think. And then here's the management style we would be using. So if I did this exact trade over 10,000 trades, you can see the maximum drawdown would be 140. And you can see you would finish uh, this strategy with 265,826. Uh, but anyways, you can find that on Option Boxer if you're curious. I've, I've had a lot of fun not only creating this tool, but just playing with it at different times. And so you may uh, enjoy that as well. 
some of the difference makers, some of the things that are really, I think, that will make the biggest difference to me being successful or not would be if positive expectancy. I, we've talk, I've talked about it on this channel before. I've, I've seen many other videos that talk about it. Uh, my experience with it at this point hasn't been particularly positive. Uh, po positive risk reward uh, management. I think trading it with the 75% max profit and the 50% max loss. If I am able to keep my win rate over 50%, I think I think it's a it's almost guaranteed that the the strategy will be some level of successful. And so we'll see what it looks like over time. Um, and then if I'm able to close and, and avoid any max loss loss trades, that's kind of one of the reasons I close it that that final week instead of holding on to it and just hoping that it, it you know it comes back. Uh, hopefully by doing that I can avoid losing all of my money on every trade and maybe that will make the difference uh, going forward. So the goal, very, very simply, I want to maintain above a 50% win rate, which I've talked about a couple of times now, double my account in one year or less. So uh, by this time next year, I'd love to be making a video and sharing with you how I was able to do uh, this strategy. The probability is, is very high that I'll be making a video a year from now uh, talking about a new challenge or a new series that I want to make. Hopefully I'm here still making this same series and I'm talking to you about how I can take that 2000 and turn it into 4000. That's uh, that's going to be a uh really cool if I'm able to get there. Tools, uh, like I've already showed you the option profit simulator. I'm going to show you right now the long vertical challenge tracker. This template, as you see it, is available on optionboxer.com. It's on the free trading tools page. It's just a vertical spread tracker. And I just made it look a little, ne a little neater, a little nicer and meet uh, some of the things that I wanted it to do. You'll see that I built in the expectancy calculator kind of right into each line item. If you want this spreadsheet, I haven't made it available on optionboxer.com. It's already available in this format. It, everything that I've done here outside of this expectancy area is exactly the same. So I just made it look a little a little neater. If you do want this spreadsheet or you think you would find some value in the new paint, paint job on it, then you can let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, I have no problem uh, adding it there. I'm not going to do it today because I've got a relatively busy uh, evening that I, that I have some things I got to get to. But starting capital, round trip commissions, whatever your commissions are, uh, max risk per trade, 10%, which means I'm going to risk about $100 per trade, uh, which is very, very aggressive. But I want to give, I want to be able to trade $2 wide spreads so I can keep the maximum profit potential as high as I can. Uh, current account value, uh, just based on these, you can see I've made $12. Uh, total commissions, I've paid $12. Uh, current maximum risk. So as I trade, I want to continue to up my level of risk. So that's the tracker. Again, if you want it, you can ask me for it in the comments. I'm happy to share it. I just don't have any plans to at this uh, moment. Right now, again, I don't have any trades to discuss. I just wanted to share with you my strategy, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, why I'm going to do it. If you guys uh, have any questions in the comments, please feel free to ask away. Or if you have some suggestions on how I could potentially uh, meet my goal even quicker. If you're really good with long vertical spreads and you happen to see this video, I would really, really love to speak to you and you could kind of give me some pointers or I'll share with you what I'm going to do and you can tell me if it's just downright stupid. But whatever it is, um, you guys can always reach me in the comments or you can uh, can message me on optionboxer.com. Either one of them will come directly to me and I always love engaging with other traders. But guys, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach me. Until the next video, God bless and take care.